Jess De Los Santos, the big stories tonight. It's no rally, they say, but a mañanita, a serenade, calling on the government to junk the terror bill which they fear might spawn abuses. But Independence Day celebrations were more subdued as quarantine restrictions limit festivities. The president, as announced, was a no-show in the ceremonies, but he did manage to exchange words with Chinese President Xi Jinping on the eve of independence. And there's no denying rainy season is upon us as declared by Pag-asa. The numbers show violence against women and children declined by more than half during the lockdown. But experts believe the situation may be worse. And while services are limited, a church in Baclaran puts its halls into good use, providing refuge for those stranded in the metro. We begin tonight with hundreds of protesters taking a jab at Major General de Boldsinas' Mañanita. But this is not mere merrymaking, as they decry the controversial anti-terror bill and what they say is an insufficient response to COVID-19. Marlene Alcaide gives us a look at what transpired in the protest. Several police checkpoints might have been set up around the UP Diliman campus this morning. But just the same, hundreds of people stormed the campus wanting to exercise their constitutional right to protest via a grand Mañanita rally. Sabi ng isang official, meron tayong mga alituntunin na dapat sinusunod ng mamamayan. Alituntunin na dapat sinusunod ng mamamayan. Pero sir, nawalan na kayo ng moral ascendancy ng, nawalan na kayo ng moral ascendancy pasunurin kami. They say going online just like what authorities advised is no longer enough as they've been doing this for the past three months and yet to no avail. You know, this is part of uh, what we call the para-creative protest. No? We go beyond uh, yung nagiging uh, action namin na ginagawa in the past months sa social media. Ngayon, eh, nag-desisyon kaming lumabas sa kalye. Following the concept of a manyanita, the very event which put NCRPO Chief Debold Sinas in hot water for having a birthday gathering during the quarantine period and not getting reprimanded for it. The protesters also brought their own food, flowers, and balloons. And of course, no party will be complete without the celebrant. In this case, Juana Change or May Panera play the part of Sinas, even candidly blowing the candle on her very own Fultus 5 cake. The Commission on Human Rights, meanwhile, even had parlor games with Pinoy classics, Tumbang Preso, and Chinese Garter. But it's not all fun and games, they say. It's actually a uh, protest sa uh, anti-terrorism bill. Alam naman po natin na yung mga kabataan ay isa sa mga pinaka naapektuhan nitong anti-terrorism bill. Hindi pa nga ito pumapasa ay nagsisend na ito ng chilling effect sa mga tao. No? The demonstrators were serious about their plea. Junk the anti-terror bill a more adequate response to the COVID-19 pandemic and action on China's activities in the West Philippine Sea, among others. Isang araw ng pagprotesta at uh, sana uh, makinig ang gobyerno sa taong bayan na tindigan ang ating soberenya sa ibang bansa na nanghihimasok dito at pangalawa, huwag na munang ipasayong terror bill na yan Kasi may terror bill naman ngayon eh, may Human Security Act naman ngayon na repressive at draconian na nga. Tsaka na ito pag-usapan kasi nakaharap tayo sa isang malaking krisis. Protesters say it is important that the government to listen to them. They insist on junking the anti-terror bill that will let authorities detain individuals without warrant of arrest and hold them for a couple of weeks without charges. After almost two hours, protesters peacefully ended their Mañanita protest without authorities arresting any one of them. For News 5, Marlene Alcaide, we are One News. Environmental groups also joined the call for change. The Power for People Coalition, the Philippine Movement for Climate Justice, and the Green Thumb Coalition led a unity bike ride called Lakbay Laya. They say the fight for environmental action and justice should also intensify. Meanwhile, opposition lawmakers together with celebrity influencers took to social media to express their concerns. 
in a Facebook Live hosted by Senator Rizzo Antiveros, Enchong Di slammed the government for failing to accomplish its promises on our territorial dispute with China. Hindi pwede yung nasa kampanya kayo, sasabihin nyo pupunta kayo dun sa, sa Scarborough Shoal, tapos pag nanalo kayo, sasabihin nyo joke lang. Ano yun? Joke lang ba kami? Hindi pwede yun. Pilipino kami, umaasa kami sa inyo. Diba? Alam namin na poprotektahan nyo kami. The Philippine National Police says the Independence Day protests went generally peaceful and orderly. PNP spokesperson Brigadier General Bernard Banak says they exercised maximum tolerance on protesters who mainly condemned the anti-terrorism bill. He also encouraged the attendees to avoid mass gatherings and express their dissent online instead. When asked about the mock Mañanita in the UP Diliman, Banak had this to say. Inibigay naman natin ng katuyakan sa ating publiko na ang insidente ay dumaan naman sa proseso. Ang bagay na ito ay um, ibinigay natin ang pasya sa ating mga mamamayan at um, tayo po ay uh, hindi naman magpapa-apekto dahil uh, kailangan natin gampanan ang ating mga tungkulin uh, bilang uh, mga law enforcement, uh, law enforcers. So uh, hindi tayo magpapa-apekto. Tuloy-tuloy lamang tayo sa ating uh, pagganap ng ating uh, tungkulin. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo recommends the signing of the anti-terrorism bill to President Duterte. Panelo says his office gave it a careful and thoughtful review and found that the bill has sufficient safeguards as it goes against those who sow widespread fear and panic among the public. Panelo reiterates that the legislation is intended solely against terrorists and does not target citizens who peacefully dissent against the government's policies. Fears raised by some sectors, he says, were more imagined than real. Over in the lower house, Deputy House Speaker El Rey Villafuerte calls for the resignation of his colleagues in the leadership who voted against the measure. Villafuerte says they should vacate their post out of professional decency for going against the majority's position. Villafuerte also said that public declarations of a change in vote has no bearing. Amid the health crisis, Independence Day celebrations across the country continued, albeit simpler and more subdued. But some wonder, is the country really free, especially with pending measures which they fear might curtail some human rights? Greg Gregorio has the details. Amid the ongoing restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, celebrations across the country commemorating the 122nd Independence Day were, as expected, simpler. At the Aguinaldo Shrine in Kawit Cavite, where the Philippine flag was first raised as symbol of our Independence Day on June 12, 1898, the overflowing crowd was absent. Even the plaza in front of the shrine is empty. Only 100 individuals were allowed entry within the premises of the shrine, including members of the police, the army, the media, and some technical staff. Only 10 VIPs were allowed inside the shrine. The program was led by Kawit Mayor Angelo Aguinaldo. That only took 20 minutes. Ngayon experience natin itong pandemic, makulong sa sarili nating tahanan, hindi makakilo sa ayon sa ating kagustuhan, may mga oras sa lahat ng mga bagay, hindi natin nakikita mga mahal natin sa buhay. Um, ngayon, mas naalala natin yung importansya kung na may sarili tayong kalayaan. In Davao City, presidential daughter and Mayor Sara Duterte led the Rizal Park celebration. Even though the president is in Davao, he was still a no-show in the event. It is our national strength, so whatever it is that we are going through, a pandemic or uh, sadness in our personal lives, let us be brave because uh, Filipinos are strong. This year's Independence Day theme is Kalayaan 2020, towards a free, united and safe nation. According to the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, the celebration honors our medical frontliners. Anong pagkakaisa ang hinihingi nito? Pagkakaisa para sumunod, para uh, umiwas sa, sa COVID-19. However, some Filipinos still question our freedom, especially with the pending enactment of the anti-terror bill. Some, like Jason, are seeking clarity. 
dapat malinaw sa atin uh, para sa akin kasi ang totoo nga niyan naririnig rin ko na sa balita pero hindi pa rin malinaw para sa akin kung para saan ba siya ano ba siya Mayor Aguinaldo and NHCP Commissioner Calairo were asked the same question May ibang mga bills na abuso ng iba po so kailangan pag-aralan natin maigi yung So siguro ang issue na lamang dito kung paano siya Uh, ipapatupad, no? kung paano ang dapat na, alam naman ang ating mambabatas yan, no? ang ating pamahalaan ang paano ang gagawin. Ang importante lang ay uh, walang masaling na, na karapatan at kalayaan ng bawat individual. In a simple celebration at the Bonifacio Monument in Calaocan, Mayor Oscar Malapitan admits that the country doesn't enjoy absolute freedom yet. Lahat tayo hindi malaya dito sa ating pandemic na naranasan. Kaya nga lahat tayo rito, naka-face mask, halos lahat ay hindi pwedeng lumabas. In the meantime, while demonstrations are still prohibited, the NHCP encourages everyone to utilize social media in joining discussions about the relevance of freedom while obeying guidelines on staying home. For News 5, Greg Gregorio, we are... Vice President Lenny Robredo reminds Filipinos that their freedoms are interconnected. In her Independence Day message, Robredo says the ongoing pandemic all the more proves the need for equal dignity, rights, and freedom. She is also urging the public not to forget the lessons of the pandemic as it thrusts the country into a new normal. Ang tunay na kalayaan ay kalayaan para sa kapwa. At sa mga pagkakataong may banta sa kalayaan ng isa, kailangang lahat tayo pumalag dahil ang tunay na binabantaan ay ang kalayaan ng lahat. We'll pause for a short break but when the big story returns, Chinese President Xi Jinping in a phone call with President Duterte vows to prioritize the country should they develop a vaccine. And the family of Michelle Silvertino, who died while waiting for days for a bus ride home, might have to wait a few years before her remains are sent to Bicol. These big stories when we come back. Jesse De Los Santos and you're watching The Big Story. President Duterte's warm ties with China gets a boost as Chinese President Xi Jinping vows to prioritize the Philippines when it finally develops a COVID-19 vaccine. The origin of the SARS-like disease is slowly recuperating from the pandemic that has killed over 400,000 people worldwide. Maricel Halili tells us in this report what the two leaders talked about. On the eve of Independence Day, President Duterte had a 38-minute telephone conversation with Chinese President Xi Jinping. This happened amid reports that China continues to be aggressive in asserting its claims on the West Philippine Sea. 
Palace spokesman Harry Roque says the conversation centered on both countries' COVID-19 response as well as their strategies to salvage their respective economies. Roque adds that the Chinese leader vowed to prioritize the Philippines should Beijing win the race to finally develop a vaccine for the SARS-like disease. President Duterte, meanwhile, emphasized the importance of cooperating with China in research trials. The conversation took place three days past the 45th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between China and the Philippines. President Duterte has made no secret of his soft spot for the Asian giant, believed to be the origin of the coronavirus disease. The Chinese embassy says the president even lauded the Chinese government for its strong leadership, which supposedly resulted in the control of the pandemic. Philippine ambassador to China Chito Santa Romana says so far, the Filipino community in mainland China is almost COVID-free. We're happy to say that the Philippine community Vito halos COVID-free on Philippine community. No? And, and I'm talking of uh, mainland no? China, not including uh, Hong Kong, Macau, and, and, and Taiwan. No? Dito sa mainland China, isa lang ang reported case. The embassy's problem now is the approximately 260 stranded Filipinos there who want to return to the Philippines. Ang problema ngayon is really waiting for the resumption of flights. Kasi once a week lang yung flight, and it's hindi pa na-resume yung mga Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific, kaya mataas ang presyo. Kaya it's, it's difficult for them to afford it. Overall, the situation in China has been improving. Santa Romana says the mainland has not recorded a new case in 55 days until yesterday when a Chinese tested positive after traveling abroad. For News 5, Maricel Halili, we are One News. There are now over 24,700 COVID-19 cases in the Philippines. The Health Department on Friday tallied 615 new cases, over 300 of which are fresh cases. But total infection count in the country is now at 24,787 after the DOH removed three duplicate cases. 16 more also perished due to the virus, pushing the death count to 1,052. Meanwhile, there are over 280 new recoveries, a new record high in the country's single-day recoveries. This brings the country's total recoveries to 5,454. The public is stunned over the death of Michelle Silvertino, a stranded Filipino worker who died waiting for a bus home amid the lockdown. Now her family may have to wait years before her remains get transferred to her hometown in Bicol. Ria Fernandez with the story. Secretive. That's how Josie described her older sibling, Michelle Silvertino, who recently died after almost a week of waiting for a bus ride in Pasay back to her hometown in Bicol. Josie said Michelle didn't tell them that she was sick. In fact, Michelle did not think twice about sending help. May 18, nakausap po pa po si ate kasi naghinabaw ng pera sa kanya. So, nagbigay po siya sa akin. Yun na lang po. Pero hindi ko na po siya nakausap ng, sa, sa mga text, hindi na po siya nagre-reply. Mm -hmm. Tapos hindi po siya sa amin nagsasabi kung may sakit siya, tapos kung magpapatulong siya. It was September last year when Michelle went to Metro Manila from Camarines Sur. She tried her luck to become an OFW so she can fulfill her dreams for herself and her family. Unfortunately, her medical exam revealed she had a long problem. Instead of returning home, Michelle decided to work as a helper in Antipolo City until May this year. Josie only found out about her sister's worsening condition when she got word that Michelle was already in Pasay waiting for a bus home. She admitted that she's incapable of helping her sister due to her own difficulties. Ngayong June trip po, before dalhin siya sa ospital, dinawagan ko po, ay tumawag po yung number ni ate sa usinagot ko po. Tapos, ano po, sabi ko, tina, ay, sabi ko dun sa lalaking kausap ko, gusto ko makita yung kalagay ni ate. So, sabi ko, buksan niya yung account ni ate, then mag-messenger kami, mag-video call. Nakita ko po yung kalagayan ni ate doon. So, yun na nga po, maitid na yung mga labi, tapos iba na po yung itsura, payat na po siya. Tapos, 
Kaso lang po, yung lalaki po kasi, ang sabi niya sa akin, tulungan ko daw po si ate kasi ganon. Sabi ko na, pinapaliwanag ko naman po na, sabi ko, ang hirap kasi ng transportasyon dito, di ba po? Tsaka, ang hirap lumabas dito. Jose is still angry over what she thought was a slow response of Pasay local officials, which led to her sister's death. Sa tingin po namin, ano, sa tingin ko po, bilang kapatid, dapat po sana, inaksyonan man lang nila. Na yung umingi ng tulong si ate, dapat po, rinispondihan man lang nila. Pero ngayon, wala, wala si ate, so, tas ngayon sila magre-responde. Para pong ano, pinabayaan man lang nila na gano'n na nga yung kalagay, hindi man lang nila inasikaso. Ganun po. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque pinned the blame on barangay officials. Authorities from Barangay 159 in Pasay have yet to react to this. But City Mayor Emmy Rubiano has already extended her condolences to the Silvertino family and assured financial aid to the family. A civic organization, meanwhile, has pledged to shoulder the education of Michelle's four children, who are all still minors. Michelle's parents will now stand as the kids' guardians. Michelle's close friend is also keeping an eye on her bereft family but they have an appeal to the Pasay LGU that is to allow the immediate transfer of Michelle's remains to her hometown request namin eh kasi yun ang yun ang nafe-feel namin na ginusto ni Michelle na makapili niya ang apat niyang mga anak hindi niya nagawa yun kung siya ay buhay pa yun po ang pinaglalaban namin na may uwi siya kahit patay na ang the Pasay LGU said that the Silvertino family has to wait three to five years before Michelle's body could be exhumed and transferred as stated in the sanitation code. For News 5, Rio Fernandez, we are One News. These are the other big stories today. The finance department clarifies they're not after online sellers. They just want them to get registered with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. This as DOF Undersecretary Antoinette Chonko notes that online transactions have increased during the community quarantine period. But it's not just the BIR that has done some explaining. GMA Network Incorporated maintains the legality of the Philippine Depositary Receipts or PDRs it had offered to the public. This as lawmakers zoom into the PDRs sold by media companies during the ABS-CBN franchise renewal saga. GMA7 insists that it complied with the regulations set by both the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Philippine Stock Exchange. All wind signals due to Tropical Depression Butchoy have been lifted as it makes its way outside the Philippine area of responsibility. Pagasa says the occurrence of Butchoy, together with the hanging habagat and scattered thunderstorms in the last five days, satisfies the criteria of the start of the rainy season. More big stories coming up. Keep it here on One News. This is a big story and I'm Jess De Los Santos. Malacanang mourns the passing of former Foreign Affairs Secretary Perfecto Yasay Jr. The former diplomat died of pneumonia caused by the recurrence of his cancer. He was 73 years old. His wife and former Population Commission official Cecil Joaquin Yasay confirmed his death in a Facebook post. Yasay served as DFA chief from July 2016 to March 2017 
but lawmakers rejected his reappointment, citing Filipino citizenship issues. As Foreign Affairs Secretary, he pushed for the country's territorial claims in the South China Sea, despite government efforts to smoothen Manila's ties with Beijing. Authorities saw a decline in reported cases of violence against women and children during the lockdown. But women and child rights advocates insist that the numbers could be far higher if only victims were allowed to go out and file complaints. Man Enriquez has the details. Over 3,600 cases of violence against women and children have been reported to the Philippine National Police since the government imposed a community quarantine. This is significantly lower than the figures in the same period in 2019 when a PNP recorded a total of 8,668 complaints. PNP Women and Children Protection Center Chief Alessandro Abelia attributed the decline in reported cases to the strict stay-at-home measures. Ang assessment po namin, since nagkaroon po ng lockdown, maaari po na yung uh, reporting system o yung transportation system, nagkaroon po ng uh, checkpoints, ganyan, at saka yan, medyo ang ating reporting system uh, na mga would-be complainant, maaaring hindi din sila nakapagreklamo. The Philippine Commission on Women insists that the number of cases reported doesn't reflect the situation on the ground. The commission believes that the actual case count could even be twice as much as the quarantine measures have locked in victims with their abusers. Kanamihan din sa natatanggap naming tawag ay mga kamag-anak o mga kaibigan ng mga biktima yung tumatawag kasi hindi talaga makapagsumbong yung mismong biktima. Through email o kaya tawag, um, sinusumbong nila kung ano yung nangyayari at pinapapuntahan nila. Kalimitan, pinapapuntahan yung biktima dun sa tahanan para matulungan. Balme said they are now turning to social media to reach out to vows of victims. Non-government organization and gender rights is also counting on Facebook as a means to extend help to victims. Uh, although mababa ang reported cases with PNP and even with the barangay, the truth is that there are a lot of uh, domestic violence happening. Uh, there are a lot of rape cases, sexual assault uh, happening, uh, and there are a lot of trafficking cases that are happening. Uh, so ang, ang sinasabi lang natin, uh, ngayon mas, mas lumalabas na sila to report. In fact, nung towards the end of May uh, in early June, marami nang nagtatanong sa akin paano magsampa, saan pupunta. Authorities are encouraging victims to come forward and use these new platforms to report cases of abuses. Several hotlines are also available. For News 5, Marian Enriquez, we are One News. McLaren Church becomes a refuge for the stranded as they await aid from LGUs and NGOs to help send them home. Ryan Ang tells us more. It used to welcome hundreds of devotees, but now, Baclaran Church is a dwelling place for the stranded. It's been a temporary shelter for locally stranded individuals, or LSI, since April. According to the missionary of Baclaran Church, they facilitated the transportation requirements of 5,000 individuals with the help of various non-profit organizations and their respective local government units. We had positive responses katapusan ng May. Nagsimula yung mga probinsya ng Sorsogon at ang probinsya ng Albays. The church provides the basic needs of the stranded passengers while ensuring that health protocols like wearing of face masks and social distancing are observed. One of them is 59-year-old Clarita Clarito. Kasi maglikpit ng mga basura, naglinis po kami, ganun lang. Tapos disiplinado lahat mga tao nakarating dito. Ganun lang. Pag ang ano ang orientation ni Father, makikinig lahat kami. Clarita came to Manila from Dabao to babysit his niece's child for a month. Naglipat ako doon sa batasan sa friend ko. Ang nangyari, yung tinutuloyan kong bahay, eh parang binubura na yata ako. Kaya ang binubura. Binubura? Binubura na, parang Binapa. paalis na. Kaya napilitan ako magpunta dito sa... She tried to apply for the Balik Provincia program, but that did not push through. Ang sabi ng DSWD, wala daw silang ano, transportation, wala, walang maibigay. Kaya magpunta kayo sa NHE. 
ang nangyari, nag-apply kami sa Inichi. Ni, ilang ano naman, wala naman kami, ano, walang tawag, ni isang walang tawag, wala, kahit ano, wala. Ilang beses na ako nagbalik-balik doon. Meanwhile, Julie and her one-year-old daughter will be able to go home to Sorsogon, as the office of the vice president for one has pledged to lend the church a bus to transport more than 100 individuals to Sorsogon this weekend. Donations continue to pour in from other NGOs and LGUs. For News 5, Ryan Ang, We Are One News. And that wraps up today's big story. Catch us again on Monday at 8 p.m. on Signal Channels 8 and 2.50. Please like our Facebook page, One News. For more in-depth analysis, visit our webpage, onenews.ph. You can also catch One News on the Signal Play app. Register for a free account now at www.signalplay.com and stream One News Live anytime, anywhere. I'm Jess De Los Santos and we are One News. Have a great weekend.